something for people? Or is it because I want to actually get into my fear? And if I want to get into my fear, why do I need everybody else to come along with me? There's also an addiction in that. And this is where many of us are. We, we want this addiction of, I don't want to have to deal with my fear alone. I want you to come with me. So we can share it. The reality is, if you try to share your fears, you'll never deal with them. Because all of your fears are personal. All of them. Right? So you never deal with them. So the key is to look at what's going on. So for, for the situation you're in, you got into anger, you know that you must have been in an addiction. Automatically. And you also know that you were avoiding your fears. And the reality is when everybody came along, most of the people who came along were also not there to deal with their fears, but to live in them. Yeah, and that's that, the obvious feeling all the spirits are having. I, I sort of question, well, the other addiction for me is why didn't I... I had the feeling I was dealing with the addiction by not leading. I didn't want to lead. And I don't have the capability of doing that anyway. I and I put to you, if you set up an event, you now have a responsibility know, to lead. I realise that now. And I, I did, I was sort of behind, <coughs> behind just suggesting can, maybe we all need to feel now. But I didn't want to... I felt that I had been in an addiction of leading, teaching, helping, that... You know, addiction that I didn't and that's want. true, but, but the reality is if you set up an event, up, you I have the responsibility for that event. And the reality is if, if, if you know, the media for somehow became... And I understand that even there was a person who rang the media during the event. It's just a story I've heard. I right? So, so that even just tells you how much these spirits wanted there to be an exposure, if you like, of, you know, negative things happening at an event. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and all that happens there is that the people rock, rocking up were still in their fears. They weren't, when I say in it, living in them, not, not wanting to feel them. If you want to feel them, you're, you're not going to be very heavily influenced by spirits. Yeah. The heavy influence by spirits occurs because you don't want to feel your emotions, in particular your fears. Because it's the fears they love to muck around with, isn't it? Mm. That's the things they love to deal with. So they want you either in your addictions, in your anger, they do not want you feeling your fears and actually releasing them. The reality is many of us have a lot of work to do here with our fears. You, many of us will never get to our grief and many of you are trying to circumnavigate your fear in order to get to your grief. You know, you're planning how to get around that fear in, into your grief. Right? The reality is that you're never going to fully feel grief until you go through and release the fear that is capping the group. Right? And many of us don't want to address our real fears. Sure. Um, I just have a question about fear. I've been doing a lot of, a lot of like, fear, feeling fear and breathing and, and letting my whole body shake and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. There's parts of it that I feel there's, there's like I'm, I'm noticing changes in myself and my law of attraction. Yeah. But at the same time, there's other parts like where it's like four hours just lying there and just contorting and, and breathing. And then nothing changes. And they're not feeling like I'm really clear on what's going on. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is, is your law of attraction is telling you if your law of attraction is changing, then you know you're dealing with something. If your law of attraction isn't changed from, a, from feeling something, then you know you're not dealing with it. Now, what's happening for a lot of people feeling fear is you cycle between two states. One is feeling your own fears, which, which you do feel, and that's the trembling inside of yourself. The other times, when you're feeling it for hours and hours and hours like that, but there's no change, you're actually feeling the fears of spirits who are with you. So in other words, you're feeling their fears, not your own. So when you really want to own your own fears, you will not be feeling the fears of the spirits. You'll be feeling your own. And there's a difference between those two states. When you feel your own fears, then your law of attraction will change. So in other words, your soul will attract different events because now there's less fear within you. And you'll start seeing demonstrated to you, reflected back at you, that you have less fear as a result of the different events that occur. You will even notice things like you'll be in the same circumstance or situation that you were in before that you were really, really afraid of. And you'll feel like, wow, I didn't even really feel afraid then, you know. And so that is also an indication that you are, have less fear and therefore you must have released some. But, but this problem that many people are having, and particularly the people like yourself, Josh, who are, you know, who do have 
an easy connection with spirits. Like the reality is that you can easily connect with spirits. Uh, you can easily hear them. You can easily feel their emotions. The problem is that any time you don't, don't want to feel your own feeling, unfortunately, you'll be feeling their feelings. That's the reality. So, so for a person who's mediumistic, one of the best things they can choose to do is to always feel their own feelings for, first, to put their priority. And when they feel like there's some other external influence, to stop. Remember I've said that to you in the past, if you feel like there's this external influence happening, stop the process because it's not right. Something's not right. Just stop it. I guess that's why I asked the question, because I, had, I haven't until this day, I'm not sure about certain processes that I've gone through. Yep. And whether that relates to how I feel differently in my life. With, you know, like... Well, certain fears, the reality is certain fears you still want to run away from. And certain fears you're okay with. Well, it's easy if you let yourself make a list of the different fears. You'll, you'll feel within you, wow, I really want to run away from that one. And that, that one I'm okay about feeling. And basically, you'll feel the difference. The, re the reality is many of us still want to avoid fear, the fears associated with violence from our families. Many of us still want to avoid that fear. So, so whenever we have that fear, we're probably going to be overcloaked by spirits under those circumstances rather than actually feel our own fears. So the reality is that we can feel the difference generally. If we're honest with ourselves, you, you can generally feel the difference. The key is to allow yourself to notice it. Does it make sense? What I've noticed is that when it feels more authentic, it's, there's some grief with it. Yes, always. Like, like the chunks coming out. Yeah, the, and in fact, the more authentic it becomes, the more grief you will have with your fear. Yeah. yeah. So you won't be just laying there trembling, but there being no tears. Yeah. Most of the time you will have tears associated with the trembling. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. These are all signs. The key is you, you can feel about these signs and recognise them and then work it out quite easily if you allow yourself to. The other thing is that those of you who are mediumistic have guides and you could just ask your guide, is this authentic? <laughs> and just get a yes or no answer and they go, okay, <laughs> might as well stop that, you know? I have a real problem with trusting any little voices and all that I hear. Yeah, but trust the loving feelings. Remember, the, the other spirits are not capable of love. The spirits mm -hmm. who are influencing you negatively are not capable of love. Yeah. So you can trust the loving feelings you're getting from your guides and therefore trust the person. So if you don't feel a loving feeling with the answer, then, then of course it, it's potentially untrustworthy. Rick? I'm just wondering, as I do fear, there's often energy it feels like leaving, like it might start in the belly and leave through the legs or something. So it's just... Yeah, and my, I put to you that you still... The fact that you're over-analysing it while you're feeling it means that you're probably not feeling your fear. It's, sometimes it pulls me out of it, like it's all, I feel all this... Yeah, it's not... It's this like, is what I'm saying, it's not your fear. It's not... So, you, so when, you, when you feel things as energy leaving you or so forth, the reality is that you're probably not feeling your own emotions. The reality is, when you're in your own fear, you will know you're in your own fear, and you won't be focused on what energy here and what's energy flowing there. And, you know, you won't, you, you'll be struggling to even breathe, let alone think anything else. That's the reality, when you're in your own fear. Now, many of you, as yet, are prepared, as yet, to feel that kind of emotion. And so what happens is then there's the analytical part of you kicks in and, and honestly that's, you might as well stop at that point because you're not fully embracing the emotion anyway and it's highly unlikely the emotion is your own. And this is something, and there are many people on the path currently who believe just the feeling of emotion means I'm progressing and I'm suggesting to you that's not the case. Uh, I'm suggesting to you that you becoming more loving is telling you you're progressing. Huh? That's the only thing that indicates your true progression. So if you don't feel more loving and you're not acting more lovingly, you are not progressing no matter how much emotion you think you're processing. And in fact, I put to you that you're probably not even processing your own emotion, if that's the case. But rather you're just processing emotions of spirits 
Or many of you are still in your tantrum emotions. Do you know what I mean by your tantrum emotions? They're the emotions you feel when you don't get what you want. They're your tantrum emotions. You can feel them for a hundred years and you still not make any progress. And I'm not suggesting that you do that. It's a waste of your time to do that. Uh, Chris? I have this thing with fear. Like, I, some of it feels ready, like I can work through it, and then some grief comes up for like 10 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I'll, I'll just feel completely alone and I can't go on that kind of feeling. Yes, uh, but the feeling of being completely alone is a fear in itself. And if you fully embrace that feeling and allow yourself to feel it, you'll get through the barrier that you have there. What do you do when it feels like people want to kill you? The then you just feel it. Like, I, that's what I do. There's many billions of people who want to kill me at present, and that's what I do. I just allow myself to feel it, and then usually I get to the point where I tremble and then cry about the fact that so many people want to harm me, and just allow myself to feel it. The key is to allow yourself to feel everything. And, and usually when we shut things down, it's because we don't want to go there yet. And so there's what I would call a block. So what I would do is feel that block. Feel, so, so if the block is I'm angry that, I, that people are attacking me, go out and bash the bag about how angry you are about people attacking you. Does that make sense? Feel that block. And as you feel that block, you'll very rapidly get to what the fear is underneath. I'm finding um, I, to access some fear, I have to... I experience it in front of them and the judgment hits me yep. and then it just intensifies it. Yep, yep. And the reality is that for some of you, judgment will shut you down and for others of you, the judgment will be okay, you know, and you'll feel the fear while you're in front of the person judging you. But that's like this first stage, but then the fear comes and it's like from there. You just, you don't even, you're aware of what's going on, but you're just in this type of, it doesn't bother you. Kind of thing. Yeah, see, when you're fully feeling your own feelings, you, are not, you don't worry much about everybody else and what they're feeling and doing. However, one thing that I do do is I don't try to inflict my emotions on everybody. So even if, like if I'm afraid, for example, I prefer to feel that in my own room than I would to sit in front of you feeling it. Does that make sense? Because I don't feel like you have to be inflicted with my emotions. And uh, the same goes if I'm crying or something like that. I don't feel like you should sit here and have to listen to me cry for 10 minutes while I'm dealing with something. I, I, I can go away and do that privately. That's my feelings. And so that's what I do. Like, um, but you don't... The reality is that uh, a lot of the times we stay in a situation for all sorts of reasons. Um, some, some of them are very addictive. Can we stop, though, talking about personal emotions and get back to the group's emotions, if that's possible? Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to know how you can, like, painting, like, my painting and my art and mm -hmm. creations and stuff, mm -hmm. how, like, how I can make that more loving, like, what questions to be asking myself and, um, yeah, just what to, what, what to look at to... Well, I think firstly, accurately reflecting your own emotions at the time you do it is a loving thing. Um, that is usually always going to connect people to whatever you do as well, connect others to what you do. But if I have a desire that you look at my painting, um, then straight away I've got an unloving desire that I need to look at. Right? Um, if I want to give the gift of my painting to somebody, a lot of times I also have an unloving desire. Like, I want them to appreciate it, or to thank me, or, you know, there's all these other emotions usually that we have in play. Once, once we're fully in our desire, without there being negative emotions in play, people are automatically attracted to us for some unknown reason. In other words, there's no advertising, there's no like control in the process, but for some reason mm -hmm. they just drawn to us and they see our paintings, in the case of paintings, they see our painting. Oh, could I have that? I really, you know, that, like there's automatically a desire for them to share the experience when we are in a state of complete love in the experience. Um, recently I've had a few people ask me to do some work for them mm -hmm. um, and I'm finding it really hard, like I'm really resistive to doing what other people want me to do. And can you see why? Mm. Uh, 
because I don't want to feel controlled, I guess. Well, there's, there's a number of different emotions inside of you, isn't there? Mm. Like, what happens if you get it wrong? Mm. Secondly, you're not doing what you desire to do, you're doing what they want you to do. Mm. How does that feel? Mm. That no longer feels like yeah. your art to you, yeah, does I it? Yeah, I don't like it very much. <laughs> yeah, so don't do it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why are you doing it? Is it because of money? Mm, a bit yeah. Okay, so there's an ulterior motive. Yeah. You're willing to sacrifice your art for the sake of money. Yeah. So look at that. Is it, can you see? Yeah, like, yeah. If we fully engage things properly, you can deal with quite a lot in the process if you let yourself engage them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'd go, why does this feel bad? Like, this feels wrong for me, but yet I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> what, why I've just am been I doing? Like, trying to get this painting done for someone, like, yep. and every time I go to it, I'm like, oh, I just, oh, I can't do this Yeah, anymore. you sit down like, and do I it and you don't feel inspired. Do yeah. It. Oh, yeah. 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 So these are all indications that something's out of harmony with love. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, so look at what's out of harmony with love and allow yourself to feel about why you're compromising love. Mm -hmm. Why you're compromising your love of yourself for the sake of another. Why you're compromising your love of the other for the sake of yourself. Yeah. It, both, both things are not harmonious with love. Because yeah. love means I love me as you and you at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There's a great power in doing art in the appropriate way. And, and this is where, what, so what we want to do, perhaps what we want to do now is just talk about some <coughs> plans that we have. And Avana's going to come up with some of her own plans as well uh, that she'll present to you. But, and we might not discuss those today, we'll discuss those perhaps another time. But um, what I would like to see is the, that the programs that are put into place as the team, that, that as a team, you stop this process of wanting to show off to others <coughs> and wanting to get something out of it for yourself and you focus more on love in the process. So, so as a team, like I feel it would be a loving thing for the team to want to put on some kind of pr a production for others, whether those others be the public, a free public production, or, you know, just initially for the guys that you know, you know, like the people who come along regularly that you know. And it would be fantastic if some of you could get together and create some kind of a band. Many of you are musically inclined, but the problem is, at the moment, you have all competing emotions, right? You have competing... you can't cooperate together. With, with music, for example. And you're finding it difficult to cooperate together with art, with music, and with things like theatre because of your own emotions in play. Does that make sense? Try to give up this desire to have everything how you want it to happen and just engage a process where you finish up creating something together. Does that make sense? In other words, have less personal emotional investment in the glory and attention and approval things that you want happening and look more at, from a group's perspective, what do you want to achieve? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of resistance in this room still. Come on, let's talk about it. Well, I was just having thoughts that musically what I've heard, there's a lot of different styles. How could you bring that all together? Like if we've got, we, we like sort of playing this sort of music or some of this type of music and someone does this, how, you know? When you say you like a certain style of music, <coughs> can you see that there might be emotions involved Emotion, yeah. with that? Yeah. Now for some of you it's emotions of nostalgia. In other words, it reminds you of a time gone by when you were more happy, more content, <laughs> where you might have been in a partnership with somebody and so forth, right? Does that make sense? And um, it could be something like that. Or it could be, uh, for, the, for the younger guy, guys and girls, it could be more that, you know, they view, um, there's this sort of feeling of um, popularity amongst your peers. In other words, you're afraid of what your peers will think when you pull out something and play something from the 60s. You know? You're afraid of what your pe peers might, how they might view you. But now that you're playing this fancy piece that nobody really connects with from, the, from, from last year, 
Um, you now, your peers are now, you're now getting adoration from your peers, but everybody else thinks, what's that? And I go, that's a, you know, I, I don't feel any connection with that. So this is where there's usually a lot of emotions in this, in this statement of, oh, I like this or I like that. The reality is, with regard to music, that it's highly <laughs> unlikely that you will not like every style of music once you, and all, almost every style of music, once you work your way through different emotions. And there will only be a few styles of music that are obviously spirit-influenced and induced that you will find difficult to listen to. <coughs> huh? Now, I know a lot of you are also quite... Um, have this arrogant emotion about popular music. In other words, if it's popular music, then it's uh, not cool, you know? That uh, many of you have that emotion about popular music. My suggestion to you is that music, if you can discover why music is popular, you will work through many emotions. <laughs> and you will also find yourself creating music that will become popular, and then you'll be able to lead through this popular connection, a, a, a people into a more loving state through the music that you create. Right? That's the reality. Music, music has this power that you can harness if you come from a loving perspective. You can harness it and help a lot of people. Right? But you're not going to be able to do that when you, st when you focus on just what you like. So, so the reality is, it would benefit the team as a group to actually do some like classical singing, for example, as a group, and just and, and just experiment with that. It would also benefit the group then to get a sixty song and bash that out. It would also benefit the group to get something like this heavy metalish and 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 some of you women to actually who don't like that kind of music to actually be either a lead or background singer for that. <laughs> Josh? Bruce and I have a desire to, to start a band yep. with that purpose of take, um, learning a song from every genre and every possible um, expression. And yep. One song for each thing. Yeah. And I, like, I would definitely go to a concert like that. Yeah, me too. Like, and, and particularly if the music had a real, like, had a real, like, nice... Uh, besides, you know, bes it, that it was melodic and, and, and attractive, and then you've got all of these different things happening, it'll be quite fascinating. Uh, and this is the thing, is that if we focus only on what you like, you are not challenging yourself. The whole idea of these teams is to begin to challenge yourself to become more loving. And, and one part of love is to open yourself up to allowance of all sorts of material, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, people who are, who are closed-minded and resistive are not loving. <laughs> do, do you think our spirit friends in the celestial kingdom have a certain um, like genre of music <laughs> that they play all the time? Because if you think that, then yeah, you, you've got to totally... You've got to totally change how you view the celestial world. Because there's all sorts of things happening there. The beauty in the celestial world is that they've become so used to be able to produce music and also art and also acting that you have skits that happen ad hoc. Yeah. Right? And things like that. So you have all these kind of events that happen ad hoc, in other words, without very much organisation. Because they don't need to, because everybody involved already knows the music or, or already understands what's going on and you get all of these different events occurring as a result. you imagine a life like that? That would be quite interesting. That? And this is where we can head to, but only if we start challenging our current likes. You see, our current likes are very much determined by our current emotional set. And our current emotional set is very much determined, unfortunately, by our parents at the moment, until such a time as we release that. Does that make sense to everyone? Good. I just, I'm just not getting the heavy metal thing. You know, I don't think it's the word. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I, I know this guy um, who plays some really, really good heavy metal, and and he's always melodic with what he creates, 
and, uh, and, and I find it absolutely fascinating to listen to. Wow. Can I have you <laughs> no, he, would, he wouldn't like me to give you. He's a guy from my past. So. Oh, he's not on YouTube? No, no, he's not on YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's got more in common as well than most people realise with classical music. Of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, there are types of music that are heavily spirit influenced. In fact, some of the dance music around now is actually heavily spirit influenced and totally. Uh, what I'd call unmelodious, and also out like it has a lot of discordance in it, mm. which is, which grates on the soul. Mm. Um, yeah. The reality is that you can create heavy metal music that has no discordance or very little discordance in it, that doesn't grate on the soul at all. It's just fascinating to listen to, and goes with certain types of moods. And the reality is, if you're if you're helping a group of people express their anger, for example, then heavy metal music is a great choice. Mm -hmm. Um, to do that, isn't it? Yeah. So. I was um, planning to start some dance classes in September yeah. to based on the, the chakras and for the purpose of connecting to the body yeah. and releasing emotion. Yeah. And I'm just wondering whether that would be loving. Well, everything has the potential of being loving, Rochelle, doesn't it? But <laughs> in my current state, soul condition, would that well, be... Well, let's, let's look at that. Okay. What, what is your current state? So Not very good. What were you going? <laughs> So in what regard? Oh, um, obviously I still have addictions that... So you've got addictions in play. Yeah. So, that, so if you're going to lead something, those addictions you're going to have to be very sensitive to, aren't you? Yeah. You're going to be very careful that you're not in your addictions when you're leading something. Yeah. Yeah? What else? What are some of those addictions? For example? Um, well, the, the approval stuff. Wanting so, approval. so wanting approval, acceptance... Acceptance, feeling probably the superiority thing. Acceptance, well. superior, yeah. So these are all really important emotions to address, aren't they? Yeah. If you're really going to be in a place... I don't know if that's how it's possible. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're really going to address... Um, if you're going to be in a place where you lead something, an event of some kind, then you really do need to be very careful of these emotions, don't you? That these emotions are going to lead you way off the garden path very rapidly. The other thing is these emotions connect you with a group of women spirits, who I've talked to you before about, um, who are in a very dark place, and who wish to control divine love through women. Right? So when I say control divine love, they're, they're trying to actually take people away from God and start having people treat them as if they're the gods. And what they do is they give the women who have these desires very strong emotions of approval and acceptance. And so the women actually, many of you ladies are receiving this unbeknown, and, and you're actually feeling quite good about something when in actual fact these emotions are in play and you're receiving, you're feeling quite good because of these women spirits with you projecting, yes, this is the way we want you to go. Yeah. And since I've been processing stuff around that, I've just been hammered by these women. And that's a good indication that you're dealing with something. Yeah. The reality is, if you're not... Unfortunately, the reality is, if you're not getting hammered by, by these kind of spirits, then it usually means you're going along with them. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. <coughs> you're missing major, major one. What is it? Can you see that if you don't know your own major addictions, it's going to be very hard to appropriately lead something. What's one of your major, major things? <coughs> Mary's talked to you about it? The therapist thing. No, no, no. Personal, personal, personal life. That one that you want to keep ignoring, right? Totally blocked to men at the moment, right? Now, who is that going to invite to along to your dance? Lots of women. Lots of women. Who are? Heavily influenced. Heavily influenced and totally blocked to men. Yep. So are you going to help them get through that blockage at all? So this is where you've got to be very careful. You need to understand yourself. You need to understand, if I'm blocked to men, 
then I'm going to attract a group of women blocked to men. <laughs> the dance stuff that I organise is going to be blocked to men. Do, do you see? Yeah. Or it will only attract men who are pandering to women who are blocked to men. That's all, that's all we'll do. All right. And this is where, again, you see, we've got to be, this is where the team, this team, the arts team, can help a lot because you can start addressing these issues together with a lot more honesty. One of the things I've encouraged Ivana to do is to be a lot more honest with the blockages. And also, from now on, we want to have one director present with every meeting that you have so that we at least know what's going on with regard to the blockages of the team. Until such a time as the team is working through these addictions in a, in a, in a much you know, more free manner. But the reality is, if you're going to set up any event, no matter what it is, whether it's privately or as a team, these are the things we must start addressing. Otherwise, everything's going to become very impure very rapidly. Now, I put to you that you don't have to wait for the team to do something. However, however, if you're in your addictions, you will find everything will go wrong. Huh? And the only time everything will go right is if you have a group of spirits with you who are helping you satisfy all of your addictions. And that will become very noticeable very rapidly. So for example, if I set up a dance thing, Everybody who comes, like, there's 95% women. Straight away I'm going, whoa. Right? Straight away I'm seeing my, my, attract, my soul is attracting an event that I created. <coughs> Therefore, it's almost totally my soul you know, creating this. And straight away I'm seeing, wow, this is telling me how blocked I am to men. And how blocked is every woman there going to be to men? You know, that's going to be... Not so good, obviously. Huh? So, the beauty is go ahead with the creation of whatever it is you desire, but then notice what it brings you. And don't go, oh, no men came. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> you know? Instead go, oh, no men came. What's wrong with <coughs> us girls who are present? There's obviously something wrong with us girls who are present with regard to men. So, the key is also in the group to do a very similar thing. Now, one thing I've asked Ivana to do is to more directly address the issues of unlovingness that are happening in the group and to immediately ask someone who's being unloving if she's certain they're unloving, and if she's not, then to discuss it with the director who was present or whatever, but if she's certain they're being unloving, ask them to immediately leave without helping them with their emotion. Can you see why we're saying that? It's not the team leader's responsibility to help you deal with your unloving emotions. It's the team leader's responsibility to ensure that the environment the team is in is loving. That's all. That's the team leader's responsibility. Now hopefully, if you ask to leave, then you'll look at your own unloving emotions rather than blaming the team leader for being unfair for asking you to leave. Do you understand? Now, I put to you, if you blame the team leader for asking you to leave, rather than seeing it as a law of attraction event for one of your own emotions, then you're already out of harmony with the path anyway. And the whole reason why we're doing this is to bring ourselves more into harmony with love, not further away from love. Yeah? So that's how we'd like to do it. So if you're going to set up your own events, do the same kind of self-critical, you know, be, be, analyse yourself. Yeah. But can you see how, like I ask you, we've talked about this with you many times, and yet I ask you, and it's like a blank in your mind. Yeah, and I'm being more aware of the women now. Than yeah. Totally. And they, the women around you don't even want you no. to even think about a man, no. let alone deal with the emotions. I hate yeah, mm. yeah. And that they hate them. Right? And the reality is that while that blockage is present, 50% of the people you could help yeah. can't be helped. It's, yeah. Because I feel, I, we have talked about that a lot, and I feel like I'm, like, well, I feel like I'm attempting, I'm going into male stuff, but I'm obviously not. But the reality is if I ask you what's, what's going on and you don't even remember that, yeah. then it's telling me that, no, you're still pretty blocked to it. Yeah. Does that make sense? after you've had quite a number of discussions about it, 
It tells you, it tells you the how blocked you are still to that. Um, and the reality is that the, the, this is what these women spirits are connecting to, this huge blockage to males is, uh, and some of these other emotions. These women spirits just having a field day with many of you ladies, to be frank. Uh, these women spirits having a field day with you. Yeah. And, and when I see it happening, I go, I feel for you guys, like particularly the ladies who are being overcoat by these spirits, but the reality is you're not wanting to deal with your fears and you do want to stay blocked to men. And you need to look at this if you really want to progress towards God. You know, half of the God that you're trying to connect to has masculine qualities. So, you know, you can't be at one with a God that you only want half of. <coughs> Ever. No? That's the reality. And uh, the reality is there is heavy spirit, and I understand there is heavy spirit pressure at the moment on all of you. Mm. Heavy spirit pressure. But you need to be sensitive to it, more sensitive to it than you are. You need to understand what is happening. You need to be aware that they are influencing you, not just other people. <laughs> There's this lack of self-analysis that is happening where, no, it's them, but it's the other problem, this problem, you know, not, not the influence upon myself, really. Do you know how before you said um, you'll know when um, a loving spirit then tells, like a loving spirit will guide you in a loving feeling? I'm still not really sure about my addictions because I I feel a loving feel, well, a nice feeling, but I'm not sure if it's my guides or just an addiction being met. Is that just more self-analysis? or? Yeah, you need to, if you're not sure, then you need to investigate further. Uh, that's my feeling. Is that the, the problem is you want to tell yourself that it's a nice spirit when often it's not. Like the, re the reality is that many of you are totally petrified of rageful women. That's the reality. And while you're petrified of rageful women, you are going to do what rageful women want you to do. And when, how do you do, why do you do it? Because the rageful woman then says, oh, I love you. You're such a nice person. And they give you all of these feelings of validation and approval only when you do what they want. So one way to test whether it's a nice spirit or not is to not do what they want and see how you feel. <laughs> and my suggestion to you is that if you, if you feel terrible, as soon as you don't do what they want, there's a high likelihood that that's not a very nice spirit who's with you. Because the reality is most of these not nice spirits will actually begin to treat you badly as soon as you don't do what they want. Yeah? Ajay, the block to men emotion, is that the same as anger and control? All blockages, all blockages are based around not having addictions met, generally. So therefore, yes, they are all usually angry in nature. And, and control, by the way, is just anger, really, in the end. Mm -hmm. And control is all about avoiding fear. So right? I have control so. of the males that are close in my life. Like, I have that addiction. Yep. And anger at them. And I'm working my way through that to I don't try feel, to be more like, No, I don't feel you are. I'm not. But, but, but I, what I would do firstly is, I'd, why, why don't you want to work through it, is what I'd be focusing on. Yeah. The reality is that if I'm in a rage three months ago with men and whenever I think about a man controlling me today, I'm still in a rage, the reality is I've worked through nothing in the last three months. That's the reality. Does that make sense? Allow yourself to compare your own progression three months ago with today and the reality is if you still feel much the same way, then nothing much has really changed. Allow yourself to see it and also allow yourself to see that you don't want to change and embrace the feeling of why you don't want to change. Okay. And the reality for many of you ladies is that you believe that if you heal the emotions with the male, that the men will then start taking advantage of you. And that's an emotion that many of you have, that you're holding on to. You believe the men will begin taking advantage of you again if you heal the emotions you have with the men. So if you'll be first, so like control them first, so you know. Yeah, that's right. So what you're doing is holding on to the desire to control so that you don't get hurt again. Because yeah. you've been hurt in the past yeah. and you don't want to let go of that hurt from the past 
and you're holding on control so you don't get hurt yeah. again. So come to the intellectual realisation of that, but not the soul. And to be honest, you need to come to the emotion of, I don't want to give that up. Yeah. I'm addicted to this. Yeah. That's, you know, be honest about the real state you're in. And so for any one of you, who, and most of you ladies are blocked to men, this is why you're still single, many, most of you, right? Because you are blocked to men. And the reality is, you need to look at the rage that's in it. <clears throat> Let yourself start feeling the rage that's in it, rather than telling yourself, oh, I'm working through this, but nothing's changing in your life. The reality is, the instant you release the blockage to men, there'll be men coming into your life. Not, not, not a week's time. It'll happen the very moment you deal with it. That's the law of attraction is perfect. Your soul works perfect, right? The fact is, while you're keeping them away from you, pushing them away from you, that your life will reflect that. Right. So does that mean that then the only males that are attracted into my life are those who want to pacify the angry woman? Yeah, who are willing but, yeah. accomplices <coughs> to your emotion. Okay. They are willing to be treated badly as a male, yes. They're willing to, to accept that a woman is blocked to them. They're willing to accept a woman's desire to control. They are willing, and they're the <coughs> men that you think are nice, right? Yeah, so they're all co so it can be their addiction of feeling a self-worth by having... Most of them will have poor self-worth, yeah. To. Most of them will have poor self-worth in comparison to a woman. And, and usually act that out in a manner where they're trying to please the woman so that they then yeah. feel approved of and loved. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. They'll be willing accomplices. Okay. Some of these addictions, <clears throat> I've been facing up to the addictions lately and feeling some remorse for them and for the unloving stuff coming out of me. Mm -hmm. I'm finding I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of remorse and then going to fear quite often really quickly. Mm -hmm. Is that normal? Is it normal? Do you, do you just often have a realisation and you feel a bit of remorse for the things you've been doing and you get under it quickly usually or...? Um, the reality is that many of <coughs> you are still skipping over how rageful you actually feel as to why you want the things that you want. So, so there is not a lot of sorrow about the actual projections of rage and anger at others in particular. And the reason why there's not a lot of sorrow about it is because you still feel that that rage and anger is justified in those particular situations. And you would be far better off feeling the justifications you have than trying to get underneath and feeling the fears and so forth, feeling the justifications instead. The reality is when you feel complete remorse, you will also feel all of the reasons why you do something and you will be willing to actually feel those reasons. You will be able to release them. In other words, you'll get to a point, when you're completely remorseful, you'll get to a point where you can no longer do the same thing ever again. So, let's say a pattern has been that you're angry with women. Right? And once you get to a point where you're completely remorseful about that, you will have actually dealt with the causal emotion as to why you're so angry with women, and you will now no longer be able to be angry with women ever again. Does that make sense? And when I say ever again, you won't. You 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 start to feel some anger arise, and you go, oh, I can't do this. You know, like you just can't do it. And you you want to work on the other reason or other emotions that might be present as a result of why the anger is rising. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And and at the moment, many of you are not wishing to do that. What what you want to do instead is you want to hold on to your anger and rage in self-justification. You want to justify to yourself why you are angry with that person. And you want to stay in that justification. Now that, I put to you, is an avoidance of your addictions. You're in the addiction still. You're trying to have the addiction met. When it doesn't get met, you're avoiding the fact that you've got the addiction in play and you get angry instead because you want the addiction met, still. And when you want addictions met, you're just having tantrums. Any emotion you're feeling in that place is just a tantrum. It's like a child wanting a lolly down the lolly aisle, not getting it, and going into a spit with mummy. And I put to you that when you're loving, you don't go into spits all the time. So what about going and expressing the anger in a quiet place and then, then work, working under it, like in feeling remorse and for having the anger? And Would you say that's a good thing? Well, the majority of you are not going to feel remorse for having the anger. The majority of you, to be frank, want to have your anger. 
And you've got to look at the feeling as to why. Feel the feeling as to why. Not look at it, feel it. Feel how much you want the anger. Feel how much you want the addiction. Feel how much you want it. When you feel it, then it will start feeling bad to you. It's when you judge it and say, no, I'm not allowed to have that, so you don't feel it, that the feeling remains within you. So you will, you will continue to be angry because you're not feeling the underlying addiction that's driving it. In fear all the time, with everything. Like... Yeah. When you say you end up in fear all the time, you're not feeling your fear all the time. You are living in your fear all the time. Or, in your case, I feel, Rick, you're using fear as a justification to not realise how angry you are. So, you see, a lot, a lot of, I feel a lot of people are still going to the wrong emotions. So, so to give an example, um, quite often I hear of a group here on Wednesday, and I'm going to address the group on Wednesday at some point, but quite often there's a group here on Wednesday where one of the men at the group say, all of you women project rage at me. Huh? And the reality is many of you women do project rage at men. But the reality is the particular man saying it is in a rage with the women at that moment. Right? And he's not feeling that. He's feeling the projection coming at him, but he's not feeling his own feelings of how angry he is about that as a result. And a lot of times I see this happening with fear. A lot of you are saying, oh, I'm just afraid, when the reality is, no, you're not afraid at all, you're just damn angry. Do you see, like, a lot of times you're, you're wanting it to be an emotion that you believe is acceptable rather than being honest about what the emotion really is. That's where I'm, I'm getting confused because I know I'm, I'm very angry with both mum and dad. And I've just you found, are. Yeah, yeah. I've released a whole lot of fear. And the reality is you're not that fear, afraid. The reality is you're not that afraid. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had a lot of rage coming up lately. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Because there is rage in you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And the reality is you're not that afraid. Not that afraid. No. The reality is that you've used fear to control others around you frequently. So the reality is if you were afraid as a person that's a real emotion, you wouldn't do that if you were really feeling your fear. A person who's really afraid does not use, does not use their rage to control other people. Do you, do you understand? It's like, like remember, these, there's layers of these emotions, right? Anger, the addictions. Keep saying these things here. Addictions, fears. Yeah. Sorry if it sounds like a broken record. <laughs> now, the reality is that if you're trying to feel this emotion, when this is the emotion that is actually present in you right now, then you're not going to get anywhere. Now, I do agree that the anger covers addictions and the addictions do cover fear. So if you're in a rage, at some point you will feel fear in the future. But it will be in the future. You, it's very hard for you to feel it now unless you're willing to feel how much anger you have and feel the reason for the, the, the reason for the anger, which is the addiction you have. And if you don't feel that, what many of you are trying to go, you're trying to be up here in a loving space, what you believe is a loving space up here, and it's not. The loving space is actually down here. Right? It's underneath the grief, that's where the, where the love is. But we believe we're above all of this sometimes, right? And so we go, oh, no, anger is unloving, so we skip over anger. Addictions are unloving too, so we skip over the addiction. Fears, yeah, AJ's been talking about fears, so we will feel fears. <laughs> and this is what many of you are doing emotionally. You are approving of certain emotions within you, not letting yourself feel what's really present. Now, the reality for many of you, for example, for many of you ladies, the reality is you're just damn angry with men. That's the reality. For many of you, you're still really angry with men. You don't even want to admit it to yourself. That's how closed you are to actually you judge it so much that you don't even want to admit that you're so angry with men. Let alone <laughs> feel the addiction reason why you're so angry. Does that make sense? But you are willing to feel your fears because AJ's talked about fears and that feels like a feeling. So you start to allow yourself to feel your fear. But, but many of you have huge judgments to fear. 
So in other words, if you're sitting there rolling on the ground at home by yourself in fear, that's going to look pretty strange if anyone knocked on the door and looked through the window. <laughs> and it also feels pretty strange to yourself, right? At that time, perhaps. And so you don't want to go there. So you feel fear to the extent that you shake a little bit. Yep, now I'm done with my fear. <laughs> but this is how we are. We're, we're judging all of our stuff, right? But grief... Grief's allowable, right? Yeah. So what, what we finish up doing is we're doing this. We're coming from this cycle <coughs> of love, and we're skipping over our anger, skipping over our addiction, skipping over our fears, <laughs> feeling some grief. Yeah. Now I put to you that these are all the unloving emotions. And while you leave them unfelt, you are never going to release them. And so you're going to have to go through them to actually get to the real emotions, not, not around them. Many of you are trying to go around them. And in, in these teams, many of you are going around them. You're all acting nice and loving towards each other, when in reality there's a huge rage coming out of you at the time. Right? You'd be far better saying, I'm in a stinking rage and I know I've got to leave. See you later. You know? <laughs> and actually go away and feel it and be honest about it. Then you would be to sit there and see and then try to act lovingly, because you have to act lovingly, because it's a God's way of love team. You understand? This is the problem that we face, you see, we don't want to be real. Many of you have been condescending towards Mary, with regard to Mary's emotions, and quite often still are, by the way, condescending towards Mary about Mary's emotions. But one thing that you've yet to learn from Mary is that she is real about her emotions. So when she's been angry, you've all seen it. You can see it in her face, right? And you know she is. And while at times she might feel ashamed about it, the reality is she's already demonstrating to you what I've already had to go through. She's going through it in a far more public manner than I have. Right? And the reality is she's showing you, you're going to have to go through your anger. You're going to have to feel it. If it takes two years, are you prepared to do that? See, and are you, are you going to feel your addictions? You're going to feel every unholy addiction you have. Because trust me, there's always a lot of them. Some, some, for some of us, there's thousands. And you're going to have to feel every one. If you really want to heal it, you're going to have to feel them. And then you'll get to your fears. And then you'll feel some of your fears. Now, a lot of this can happen very rapidly, but only if you're willing. Yeah. Just ask, I get very fearful of men that do want to please a lot. And then when they when, get sorry, men, that, men that want to please, yes, yes. I attract that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I you're afraid of them. I feel afraid of them because I feel a layer of rage underneath it. And they might be in fear. Yeah. The fear feels above this rage. Of course there is a layer of rage under anybody who wants to please you. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the male. So if they're showing fear, is that they're scared of just showing their rage to me? And they're choosing to please instead? No, no, they, they yet to even get to the point of feeling their childhood anger about how they've been treated. Many of them have childhood anger about how they've been treated that they're going to have to experience. You know, that's just directly above their grief. And, but, but to be frank, you have a lot of rage towards men. I know. I know so, so, so you're projecting rage as a man. He's not projecting rage back at you. So underneath... Underneath him is his desire to please. Now, his please comes at you. What does it cause in you? Anger. Yeah, but it causes anger in you. There's an emo emotion under the anger, you see. What's the emotion under the anger? When he's trying to please you, what's he trying to do? Oh, I must have a demand going out. No, no, you've got rage going out of you. Yes. <coughs> he then kicks into pleasing you to calm down your rage. But what does he want from it? He wants a reward. What's the reward in the past that you've given? Um, I give him approval What's the reward you've given in the past to a man who's pleased you? Be honest. Um, well, there's... Yeah, I've given sexually. Okay, so sex. Um, Can you see, you feel then a man who pleases you wants this from you. And that even makes you more rageful. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the reality is, you might. Why is it not happening at the same time? Like, am I, is it my rage that's causing the man to please? Or is the man wanting to please in fear? Like, isn't it happening at the same time? Am I responsible? Of course, he has an unhealed emotion where he wants to please women. And yeah. he's finding a woman who's in a rage that he needs to please. Yeah. And yes, you have an unhealed emotion that you're in a rage with men. And yes, you want a man to please you. Yeah. You want a man to please you. The only problem is every man in the past who's ever pleased you wanted something in return. Yeah. And that pisses you off. Yeah. Right? You want him to please you without any expectation. Yeah, I do. Which is pretty selfish <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> right? But that's what you want. Be honest about it. The reality is you want him to please you and you give him nothing. That's what you want. Oh, do I? And I still want that, do I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You still want him to please you. <coughs> you don't want him to give you nothing because you want him to please you. And you want to be able to give him nothing and he still pleases you. Well, I want to be able to give when I want to give, not necessarily what he wants from me. <laughs> There's a lot of rage. Is that true? That, that being truthful to us, is that I, true though? Is that... I know you're being truthful, yeah. but you're not seeing that if you actually had desire and you actually had love, you would actually view giving as a gift, and you don't. The reality is you don't view giving as a gift, you view giving as a demand from the other person that you've got to satisfy. And while you have that emotion in you, you're not going to really want to give to anybody. Let's no. face it. Yeah. Right? So the reality is while you tell yourself you only want to give when you want to give, the reality is there's not many occasions when you want to give to a man. Yeah. And the reason why is because of all of these un these, this rage that's capping all of this emotionally. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. That makes and that sense. is in play. Now, for you to then go, oh, he's just pleasing me, and underneath that he's got rage, I'm going, wow, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Not just. I just wanted to know if that was happening as well. As... I'm saying that it is happening. Yeah. However, it's pretty amazing that you're focusing on that considering all the emotions in yourself. Yeah, well I just wanted to understand it, I suppose. What was no, you don't. You don't want to understand it. You want to justify the reason to not give to him. Oh. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Well, you feel it. Of course, that was the whole reason why you raised the issue. The whole reason why you raised the issue is because you feel that his pleasing emotion comes from anger, yeah. And then you want to say, well, I don't want to give to him then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, which is just supporting your original argument that you don't want to give to a man under any circumstance anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so can I, you see the pointlessness of analysing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the reality is if you just felt your rage towards males and you felt the fact that every time a man pleases you, you just feel even more enraged with him because he really wants something from you. That's mm. what you believe. And the reality is right now, if you attract your soulmate in your life and he just wanted to love you, he didn't want you know, he didn't want you to give him sex. I wouldn't see it as that. You wouldn't see it as that. I wouldn't, no. You you would actually see it as he he What's wants he something from me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, you try, I'm glad I can see that more clearly. Like half of the battle for me is just getting to the truth of where I'm at. You're not gonna to get to the truth of where you're at, seeing it. Well, I feel I do. I understand that more. No, no you don't if understand. I'm, if I'm setting that whole thing off with my rage... Yeah, but I'm saying to you, you don't understand. Because the okay. only time you will ever understand, and this is something that all of you need to come and, to realise, you are only ever going to understand that when you feel it, not think it. Yeah. That's the only time you will actually understand it. Do you, do you get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You see, You see... You feel that if I work this out, work that out, work this out, work that out, I can understand. No, I'm sorry. <coughs> you are never going to understand until you feel the rage you have towards men and you feel the extent of it. And you feel, actually, the reality is you don't want to please any man. That's no, the reality. Okay. And you couldn't give a stuff whether he wants to please you or not for the right reason or not. The reality is you just don't want to have to please him. Mm. You only want things, but you want him to please you. That's the reality too. The reality is you want him to do whatever you want, whenever you want it. That's the reality too. Feel that and feel how unjust it is, but still feel it. Yeah. Do you see? Stop judging it as going, wow, jeez, that makes me a pretty bad woman when you think about it. Oh, well, I, felt, I have felt that for a long time. I've been like, yeah, I don't want my soul made. I don't, I've been honest with myself with just not wanting yep. a man, not wanting to give a man even my time. Yep. yep. Not even five minutes. I yep. just don't want to, yep. you know? Yep. So feel that, but understand that, yeah, this is all I'm loving. Yeah. And I need to get to the bottom of this if I'm ever going to progress. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to be heavily spirit-influenced by very nasty women spirits while I'm in this condition. Yeah. And you are. Yeah. 
So if times. I've got a man in front of me, my Lord will check, like if I've got a man that's really wanting to please me, I know that my rage is just pouring out of me. Yep. Basically. So I do understand that more yep. now from, from that example. Yep. And if he doesn't yeah. please you, what do you feel? Um, well, if I've got an expectation, I suppose I'd feel angry, but if I didn't, it wouldn't worry me. But can you see that sometimes you get really angry and other times yeah. you couldn't give a care less? Yeah, it's um. different depending on what my expectation is, I suppose. Or and it's also different depending on what you believe is the underlying emotion coming from the male as to what he wants from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but if you don't heal any of this, you're never going to be with your soulmate. You're never going to get yeah. closer to God. Well, I've even got those women telling me, questioning the whole soulmate thing, so I'm obviously... Of course, a yeah. Way, There's a lot of the women spirits don't even believe in the soulmate thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they've come to talk to myself and Mary frequently. And yeah, they say they're saying this whole soulmate thing is just a fabrication, and we've, there's no such thing as soulmates. We've never <coughs> met a soulmate. We don't want to, and there's no such thing as soulmates. We are God. <coughs> we are God. You know, they're saying they're, they're in hells, but they believe they're God. And and women are the gods of the universe. And like, if you could hear what they really say, if you just open yourself to hearing what they really say about men, you'll have a very good indication of their real condition. Yeah, and it, to be frank, it will frighten many of you mm. if you really let yourself feel what these women are feeling like. But the reality is, this is the thing you see. You, you're in, you're in, the rage is, the, is like the tantrum. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to give it up. Mm. And it, we need to be a lot more honest with ourselves about this and go, oh, we don't want to give it up. We don't want to give this rage up. So there's a problem here. Mm. There's a problem here. We don't want to give it up. And I don't want to be more loving. And you, this is the whole purpose of the God's way of love teams, is to become more loving. <laughs> so, so what's the point? If you don't want to be more loving, be honest with yourself, if you don't want to be more loving, why are you even bothering coming to a team meeting? Why bother? You might as well just say, I don't want to be more loving. Stuff it. <laughs> and work your way through that feeling and then get to a point where hopefully you've worked your way through the feeling enough to go, oh, no, actually, I do want to be more loving. And then come along. Does that make sense? That's what we need to do. Let ourselves embrace the emotion that's present. So at the moment, because you have your judgment of rage, you don't let yourself embrace the emotion of rage that you have towards men. And you also are constantly looking in your mind for a reason to be angry with the men. What judgment of my rage do I? I didn't think I did. Yeah. Oh. What's rage for you? It feels good when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but from God's perspective, how do you think God feels about it? Well, it's an addiction. It's, I love it. <coughs> um, but, well, I mean, but if, that's, if it's the truth of where you're at, it's fine if you're responsible with it, which I haven't been as well. <laughs> but can you um, see how yeah, there's a lot of contradictions in what's just been said? Like, yeah. Do you know, on one way you're saying, my rage is good. And by the way, many of you ladies feel that your rage is good. Particularly rage towards men is good. There's no other way to control it other than being a rage. Rage is good. I'm meaning it feels good to release. Like... No, I'm sorry, you're not releasing anything when you're in a rage. This... Rage is an effect emotion based on an addiction not being met. So therefore you're not releasing anything when you're in a rage. I know it feels good, but the reality is you need to let yourself feel, yeah, I'm addicted to the feeling of how good rage feels to me. But I mean, if you just feel it for a minute and then drop down, is it, that's the only way to do it. No, but it? I'm saying to you, you're not feeling it, because the reality is it's still within you. When you feel it fully, honestly, you will never be able to feel it again. Yeah if you felt it fully and released it properly. Yeah. The reality is you're not releasing the rage, you like it. Be honest. Right. I like being in a rage with men. I like it. It feels good. It feels like I'm in control. It feels like I've got the power. Mm. They do what I want, most of them. Most of them are witness <laughs> anyway. Let's face it, they do what we want. Most of them just want sex anyway, and we, if we don't give them that, then we've got control. 
I can feel that. Sorry? I, that the wimps hit a truth in me. That's true, how I feel about men. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of feelings like that that mm. each of you ladies have. Like, and and a lot of these women spirits have exactly the same feelings, by the way. That's why there's an attraction. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why these women spirits have almost total control of many of you. Because they, they, they feel the same way. And the reality is, this is why the group, the arts team, gets a lot of attra attraction of that, and the mediumship team too, both both heavily affected by, and, and the communication team, heavily affected by women's spirits, because there are many women in those teams who are in this place. The reality is you do feel rage is good. You feel like you want to keep your rage. You don't want to release it. If you release it, you think you're going to be weak. And if you're weak, what will happen then? Men will just tread all over you. That's your belief. The reality is that's not the truth, but that's what you feel. So what fear is keeping it in place? Fear of letting it go. No, be honest. It's not fear. I want you want it. You love it. Stay say after me. But you just said that um, men will tread on me if I let it go. No, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, oh. I'm saying that's an emotion you have. I'm not saying that's true. Oh, it's you believe that's true. You believe that's true. The reality is many of you ladies love your rage with men. You love it. You want to hold on to it. You don't want to let it go. That's the reality. Look at what's happening in your life. You're still in a rage with men, many of you. So you don't want to let it go. Be honest. You don't want to let it go. <laughs> hey Jay, this is fantastic for me. I feel my mother has been in rage with my father all her life. Most most women have been in a rage for a long time. So what so I'm attracted to you and, and truth and divine love path, but there's all these women around me that have rage with men. That's right. So what that's how a part is of your law of attraction. Yeah, exactly. That's my law of attraction. I agree. So how <coughs> If we did the flip side without analysing it, what do I need to feel with me? Fear of the angry woman. Fear of the angry woman. When, when a woman's angry with you, what do you feel? You feel like you're sexually incomplete. You feel like you're, um, you know, inadequate. inadequate. Yeah. Um, you feel all these emotions. That's and then I'm trying to please them to get that. To get the feeling of inadequacy. Yeah. yeah. To get the feeling that you're, you know, that you're worth something. Yeah. In a woman's eyes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So the flip side is applicable to most of the men in the group. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the men in the arts team, most of the men in the mediumship team, most of the men in the communications team all have those emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reality is the men need to work through this emotion of what you know. The problem is that every time you please the woman, you're helping the angry woman stay in her emotion of rage. Yeah. The reality is you're assisting the creation of an unloving event through your attempts to please her. The reality is also when you no longer please her, she'll get even more angry. <laughs> and I was looking at and that's that. what you're afraid of. Yeah, that's great. I, I came here today um, yeah. because I have a passion for music, but I also have got these addictions that I'm working at yep. in my law of attraction um, things. And I was wondering, with, is it possible that through uh, ex um, feeling the fear and doing it anyway and expressing your desire to? create some music or some art, mm -hmm. that that was a way to be, to see your uh, law of attraction be confirmed. Of course it is. Everything, yeah. everything you embrace with your passion and desire is a perfect way for you to eventually clear away some emotion. If you're open to seeing what the addictions are, if you're open to feeling what's going on. Totally. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying the group needs to start doing. Many of you ladies need to see that you do want to hold on to your rage with men. You do. Just, just be honest about it. And allow yourself to see that you love your rage and allow yourself to see that you actually love the control, the power, all sorts of things that it gives you. Let yourself see it. Allow yourself to see, if you're single, allow yourself to see there's a reason why you're single. There's a reason why you're not living with a guy. And it's because, at the end of the day, you can't stand them. And you're projecting that at them, basically. You want certain things from them and you want your addictions met. And when your addictions are not met, you tell them, piss off. Do you, do you want me to use swear words regularly? Because <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the amount of rage in you. You, know? you want to swear about it. 
You, you want to, you know, you don't let yourself, but you want to. And the reality is many of you think your rage is good and you love your rage and you don't want to get, you don't even want to see what the addictions are under it. You don't even want to see them. And I'm saying to you, the problem with our team here is it's being run by these addictions. It's being run by them and if none of you want to see them, then we're, we're in trouble in this team. If none of you want to see these addictions, we're in trouble. Right? Because while the addictions are in play, nothing pure is going to happen in this team. And it doesn't matter what the leader does with this team, if we're all in addiction, at the end of the day, nothing pure is going to be created. It will all be effort for nothing. Right? This is where we've got to deal with Sam. Um, Angela, I just recently started uh, doing a yoga group. Doing a, a yoga group. Yoga group, yeah. Yeah, but see, I, I would say to you that you're not wanting to purify some other more and far more important emotions at this point. So, so while it's lovely to purify the desire you have to share yoga, the reality is while you're wanting that particular thing to be purified, but not a lot of other things in your life to be purified, you're going to be very selective in the way that this yoga is used to purify anything. The reality is, if you have rage towards men, which you know you have, inside of yourself, you are not in a place of purity when it comes to half of the entire human race. Now, you can purify your desire for yoga if you want, but one of the biggest ways you're going to purify it is by getting those other half of the human race into your life. Do, do you understand? That's one of, going to be the one biggest way to purify your love and purify even the yoga, the desire that you have to share something. And the reality is, you can, you, this is the problem, we can be so dishonest with ourselves when we do something. We go, oh, I'm so passionate about yoga. Why aren't you passionate about having your soulmate in your life? So, it, like, remember I've said to you over and over again, the biggest, the biggest things are in terms of passions. It, this, is, this is the passion priority list, if you want. Huh? God. God is going to bring to you everything you can imagine and more than you can ever imagine in your relationship with God. That's the reality. If God is the number one passion. Number two passion is the soul, your soul. Your soul, which means you and the other half of you. The complete soul. Your soul. Right? Your next passion. Then we can list others, people, other people. Right? Next passion. These are the passion priority list if you're actually bringing it into harmony with God's love. Right? Now there'll be things like, you know, animals, birds, you know, things, desires, music, art, and all these other things. All down here, right? Now, what we often do is we engage one of these passions down here, like maybe music, let's choose that. Right? Engage that passion, but I don't want to share it with men. So half of the population doesn't get it shared with, right there. And I don't want to have my soulmate around my life, so half of my own self I'm denying. And what's happening with my relationship with God? Nothing. Well, I'm only ever capable of connecting to half of God. That's the reality. Now, am I really passionate then? Can I say that I'm really bringing my passion into purity? Not really. And this is what I'm saying to you, is if you're going to have a passion, like have the passion of yoga, have it, but let's be honest. Bring the passion into purity by healing this stuff you have between the opposite gender and yourself. Until I do, it's not loving to anybody that really... Not really. Well, why do you think... That it hasn't had the accomplishments that it possibly could have on this planet. Isn't it because of this? Isn't it because of how much healing has to happen? Right? The reality is we have the, we have the ability to heal a lot of things right, on this planet, but, but not if we're dishonest with ourselves. That's the reality.
Now, you know, there's many of you who would love to be involved in massage and other forms of therapy helping people, right? But what's the point doing that when half of the population can't come to you to be healed? Because if you have an intergender emotional injury, half of the population is not going to benefit from it now. Isn't it uh, also it's greater than half the population? Because you're actually not helping the same gender at the same time. Uh, of course, that's right. It's greater than half the population because you're actually not helping the same gender as yourself to actually heal their problem either. You're actually assisting them to live in their problem and not heal it. So the reality is you're actually being unloving even to the, your own half of the gender population. That's the reality. So, so my suggestion is embrace your passion, but be honest with yourself. Wow, I've got five women to come along. And one guy that left halfway through. And one guy I left halfway through. <laughs> How many women came along? Uh, five. Honey, uh, <laughs> So five women and one guy lives halfway through. So what is that telling you? What is the best way to bring your yoga into harmony with love and truth? Is to heal this half. Is that, you can see that? Heal this half. Don't hold on to the rage and the anger and everything. And don't go into this place of saying, oh, but yeah, I'm going to break it all pure but without the men. Or I'm going to make it all pure but without the woman. You know? The reality is you can't make it all pure without half the world. That's the reality. And not just half the world, it's half the spirit world and half of God and everything. You're never going to make it pure. The problem is that these women spirits with who are, who are attacking us at the moment do believe that this is possible, to bring something into purity without men being involved. That's the reality. They believe that. And while they're influencing you, there's going to be many times when you will feel like, oh, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. And the reality is there's a lot of rage in that. And the key is... To the key is to look at it, if you're denying half of your own soul and half of the world's population and half of the God you say you want to connect to, then there's not much purity there. So if you're honest and say, yeah, yeah, there's not much purity in me yet, you know, let's look at why. Do I want to work my way through it? No. A lot of times the answer's going to be, no, I don't want to. F this, I don't want to do that, you know. That's the underlying emotion. Feel the, the rage. Feel it and acknowledge its presence. And feel it and go, wow, this is how dark I am at the moment. And it's okay to be this dark. It's okay to even acknowledge it and go, wow, this is how dark I am. Why? Why am I this dark? Oh, it's because of... And for, for many of you ladies, to be frank, it's not about what's happened to you. It's about what's happened to the generations of women before you. But for, the reality is for many of you ladies... Men have been pandering to you all your life. Right? That's the reality. And it's, and it's the multi-generation women I've been <coughs> with you who are the, are the women who have this rage and are expressing this rage through you. Right? So there's all sorts of reasons for it, but we need to feel it. So you're saying that it's not necessarily your dad's? No, unfortunately for many of you, it's not your dads, it's your mums. Yeah, not but yeah. the man stuff, our rage of men or our fear of men or whatever, that's yeah. been generation. A lot of your, your dads have viewed you as lovely girls and yeah. you know, they've tried to give you everything they possibly could. No way. <coughs> no, a lot of, like, how many of your dads have been like that where they, um, they basically worshipped you as a princess? How many of you have had dads like that? A lot more of you need to be putting up your hand. Sorry. Yeah, That's how it's sorry. been. You are screaming, absolutely. Yeah, a lot, a lot of... Beaten to a pole. Yeah, oh, beaten yeah. to a pole too. Yeah. And, and how many of you got beaten to a pole when Dad came home? Because Mum told him to. Yeah, so you don't recognise that. Many of you, that's what it was like. And it happened to me as a male. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this is the same for everyone. I'm just saying that these are many of the emotions that we have, right? Many, you don't realise that many of the emotions you have, well, like your dad's there smacking you, half the time not wanting to do it, but he's looking for the approval from his wife. I find that really hard because I've been trying to access emotions around men. 
I'm not like men aren't actually doing anything to me. No. They make me angry, so I don't even know. And men haven't really had much to do with your life, no. your whole life, have they? No. So that's why I find it really hard because I don't really, I can't say, oh, that man did that to me, so I'm really angry with him. So I don't even know. So you totally blocked to the mail. Yeah, but that's why I find it really hard. So I've got to pray more about wanting to see. It's my mum and my It's mom. obviously your mum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so yeah. do I look at the way she treats men? Definitely. And then... And what her feelings are about men. And if you connect to a man, how will she treat you? That's, I mean, for a disapproval, judgment, all that. Yeah. That's been the main... But, but there's also, obviously, still blocks to the men. So why? So if I pray to God about to show me the truth... Always. I'll get more attraction. Always. Okay. Yeah, let your see many of us many of us are not asking for truth. Remember when we first came here today and said, Wow, there's a feeling from you guys not wanting to know the truth here. When you have that feeling not wanting to know the truth, no truth is going to come to you. When you really want to know the truth, you'll find out the truth rapidly. Many of you don't want to know the truth yet. And the reality is I can raise all these potentials with you and you go, No, that's not with me, no, that's not what it's like with me, no, that's what it's like. And it wasn't like that with me. My father beat me to a pop. There's your rage. Feel it. Feel how much you don't want to connect to a man as a result. Right? But for many of you, I'm saying your rage isn't because of that. Because no man's beaten you to a pop. Even your daddies didn't beat you to a pop. The reality is you still have rage with men and blocks with men. So why? There's got to be some other reason. Allow yourself to know. Allow yourself to want to know. Uh, these are the things influencing the group. Anyway, you all must be hungry. <laughs> so what we'd like to do, and perhaps another meeting time, Ivana, you can sit with the group and we can discuss some of the plans that we have with the group. I feel some of the plans that we've got are really going to be really fun uh, to engage, but it just depends on whether you really want to engage them emotionally or not. No? And, and stop... These, like, what we're going to do in the future with unloving projections is we are going to stop them. And the way we're going to stop them is just ask you to leave. Is that right? Yeah. Is that, like, do you feel like other people deserve your unloving projections? No? Well, so it makes sense, doesn't it, just to say, well, no, these, these things are going on that are unloving, so just leave and come back when you feel you've dealt with it. And what we're going to do when you come back is we're going to ask you whether you really do believe you've dealt with it. Mm -hmm. right? Because we want to address the issue in a loving space so that, so that when we have these team meetings, we know we're going to get truth, we're going to get loved. We're not going to be you know, in a place of our addiction so much. We, our addictions will be challenged. But the person who's the leader does not have the responsibility to make you go through your emotions, does not have the responsibility to answer questions about your emotions. They don't have those responsibilities. They are just engaging their passion and leading a team in those passions. That's the whole desire for the particular teams. Does that make sense? So if you can bear that in mind, uh, the next time we have a meeting with the team, we can outline some, uh, you can outline some of the plans that we've got. But like I, I'm really looking forward to the auditions. And I'm even thinking of being on the panel. Yeah, well, you know, we, myself and Ivana have talked about some of Ivana's addictions as well in this process, so don't feel that the leader of the team has escaped, escaped unharmed, <laughs> if you want to hear it that way. Yeah. Danielle. Um, with the audition. Yep. So can you audition, not necessarily for singing, but for like a drama or... Yeah, a, a drama or an acting skit or a little, a five, <laughs> even a five minute humorous play or something, you know, something that just connects people with just even just joy, you know. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do, but, but we want it to be engaging. We want it to have, you know, to have some engagement in terms of emotional engagement with the people, with the audience. Where the audience isn't just feeling like, oh, this is just another, uh, do we have to sit through this? You know? We don't want to have that, where the audience is just feeling like they've got to sit through a trauma. Yeah. 
Okay? And, and, and there's a lot of things that can be done in that place. Now, now if that means that there's only three or four things that are, that are presented, then we'll do three or four things and that's the end of it. If some of you want to do more than one and we find that both things are good, then that's, that'll be fine. Uh, we're happy to have one of you go all night if that's what... <laughs> if it's good, I'll be happy to come to that. The, the other thing is that this uh, thing that's happening down south, down at Armidale, Again, it's the same sort of principle. We want, we want the people who do do the different things to, to, to be fairly well rehearsed and, uh, and in their passion. But also we're going to have uh, nights where there'll be some karaoke and stuff like that where anybody can get up and sing no matter how bad they are. And as long as you're willing to get a few rotten eggs in front of you or something, then that's fine. Um, so, um, yeah, if we can... Uh, not, I'm not saying you'll get rotten eggs thrown at you, but... Um, but if we can do that as a group, I feel the group has a lot of positive abilities to help you through these addictive emotions. If you don't engage it, and if you, start, and if you keep in this projection of you know, condescension towards the group's leader, condescension towards what's happening, actually happening in the group and, and the different things that are organised, then my suggestion is just don't come. Organise your own stuff separate to God's way of love and just don't come. Because the reality is we want people who are in this group to be a demonstration of love with each other. That's what we're looking for. And we want them to have a desire to love, even. Come with a desire to love. You know? Yeshua, do you feel that because you've risen so much in love, and you're in the public eye as well, so you get in the media, but even Ivana has, I've noticed since I did a workshop with her 18 months ago, that that's why they're attacking the people around you even more to attack you yes. because otherwise once it gets to a tipping point they'll have no more control that's right you need with the spirits around you you need to see their motives and their motivations are much larger than what you believe they're not just personal their motivations are all about stopping the momentum of the divine truth on earth that's their motivation they they don't care what they do to you to achieve that. And if they can use you as a means to discredit the divine truth on earth, they will. Guaranteed. Last Sunday, it felt like my eyes had had acid on them mm -hmm. because I was staying with divine truth things amongst women that were angry. And um... But that being said, Eliana, on a Wednesday when I saw you, you were totally overcloaked by one of these spirits. Just when I saw you down at the shipping yeah, containers. Yeah, and I could actually feel it then. I mean, I didn't even realise you were there, and I went, oh. But <laughs> well, you probably were totally the spirit overclocked. went, oh, shit, there's like AJ. It was impossible to even discuss it with you because you were so overclocked. And so, yeah, you know, again... Is, I was on my way to work anyway, but I just I understand. went, ah. I understand yeah. the situation, but again, stop looking at the other people and look at yeah. yourself with regard to love. Now, yes, I understand there have been many things going on that have been unloving in these groups, and we want to address them all. The Wednesday group I definitely want to address as well because it's just what's happening in the group is unloving to the participants of the group. Things that are unloving cannot grow. It's only, you see, the divine truth on earth is not going to grow while we ourselves, who are part of it, are being unloving. The reality is it can't grow. It will grow automatically when we, when we become more loving. Automatically. It will, people will automatically be attracted. That's the beauty of it. Now... What we need to do is, if, if things are not growing, we need to analyse our own feelings of what's unloving in me. Forget about what's unloving in everyone else, because you can't change that. You can only change what's unloving in yourself. And what I'm suggesting to you, for many of you ladies, there's a lot of unloving emotions coming out of you towards men. For many of you men, there's a lot of needy, pestering emotions coming out of you towards women. <laughs> right? That's the reality. And the reality is we need to address them. Does that make sense? And, and we need to get ourselves into more harmony with love. The more we do this, you'll find things will grow naturally. Things go stagnant only when the people involved are stagnant. That's the reality. And what we want to do is, with the teams, is use these teams as a mechanism to continue our growth. Does it make sense? And use the times when you meet together, even privately, as a mechanism for your growth. Stop staying in your addictions. Notice your addictions more. Right? 
Notice the angers and the fears that you have and allow yourself to feel them more rather than living in them. And I understand there's a lot of like spirit-based pressure on you and I you know, have sympathy for that. However, um, when you no longer compromise truth for the sake of their projections at you, you will have learnt many basic things about the divine truth. Do you understand what I mean? Don't compromise truth for the sake of these interactions with the spirits that are around you and for the sake of the pressure that they're placing upon you. I understand this pressure and that pressure is going to be quite intense for a while yet until such a time as these spirits have so little hold on us that they give up with us and go to another group instead. Do, do you understand? At the moment there's a lot of pressure because they can feel they can get somewhere with us. That's why there's pressure. Once they feel that they can't get anywhere any, anymore, then they'll give up pressurising us and go somewhere else. That's the reality. And who knows, in that process they may even stop pressurising anyone, which is from what they learn. We don't know. So the reality is that if we can allow ourselves to uh, work our way through this pressure that we're under and work our way through it still staying loyal to truth and still staying loyal to love, then we will very rapidly get through this hard time of spirit pressure and we will be able to be free of their influence. Does that make sense to everyone? So that don't be afraid of them so much. If you feel fear, then feel it. Of course you need to feel it. Feel the attacks that are upon you. It's fine to feel them. Um, you know, you need to feel them in fact. But you need to recognise them for what they are. They are firstly bribery and then they are blackmail, trying to prevent you from connecting further to God. That's all they are. And those spirits uh, will give up their blackmail. Um, they, they will firstly give up their bribery once you no longer accept the bribe. And then they'll go into blackmail, which is the rage with you. And then they'll give up their rage when you no longer accept the blackmail. And after that, they won't be able to influence you. Okay, is there any questions? It's okay. Yeah. okay. Um, I just was still a little bit confused about um, how you said don't skip over emotions, mm -hmm. yet the fine line between not skipping over them and indulging in them. Um, uh, yep, let's, uh, and so that, for example, let's look at rage. I need to acknowledge that I'm in a rage. Yeah. I also need to feel this rage. If I was indulging in the rage, I would be rageful at others. So that's now an indulging in the rage. I am actually now in my rage but projecting it at people. I'm using my rage against people now. Now, if I'm in a real rage and I don't want to do that, which is what I don't want to do, but I still need to feel my rage, then I need to feel the extent of my rage inside of me privately by myself. I need to feel the rage every day until the rage is lessened and I get to what's under the rage, which is usually a heavy addiction under the rage, and I start to feel the addiction. So, for example, if the rage might be I'm, a ra I'm in a rage with men, that's it. I just hate men, right? I'm in a rage with men. So every day I'm out there with a boxing bag or a bat or whatever and feeling my rage with men, and then I start feeling what my addictions are with men. Ah, oh, I just want them to do everything I want. That's my addiction. I want them to do everything I want. I want them to provide for me, make me feel good, make me feel like I'm sexy, make me feel everything. Like that's what I want. Like that's so from a woman feeling all these things. I realise these are all my addictions. So I feel my addictions without going out and getting them met. So in other words, if I was indulgent, I would then go out and go, well, yeah, I flirt with a guy and he gives me a nice feeling. And I've got a, you know, that's being indulgent. I'm now being self-indulgent. I'm now getting the addiction met. If I just feel the addiction, I go, wow, this addiction feels like I want the man to make me feel like I'm sexy. How much do I, yeah, you really feel it, you'll start to realise, wow, I don't feel sexy unless he makes me feel sexy. 
you start feeling even that. And so now you're starting to get to fear, the fear which is, I'm not sexy. And I want the man to make me feel sexy. That's why I go out and flirt with him, and that's why I batter my eyelashes at him, and that's why I do things with him to, you know... And when he doesn't give me that, I say, useless male again, another useless male. And then as I'm back into my rage. Mm. Now, if I'm indulgent, self-indulgent, mm -hmm. instead of going through this process in a private manner, what I will do is I'll project this at other people. And from that moment on, I'm never going to deal with the underlying emotions. And I'm also in a place of damaging other people. Now, one of my self-indulgence might be not to do it with a male. I might to get together with five other females and we all express our rage with a male. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. That's indulgent. I guess my question is, um, as you process your emotions, yep. you, like, if I express my rage, I'll drop into fear. Yep. Pretty fast, yep. a lot of times. If you fully feel it. Yep. If I fully feel it. Yeah. Uh, um, if you don't want to get into your addiction, yeah. then you will stay in it. And that's telling you, I don't want to do this. So you're better off just stopping. Right. And going, I don't want to feel my addictions. Uh -huh. And I'm going to stay in this state now for the next six months and see what that feels like. Right. If that's what you want to do, yeah. yeah. But, but <coughs> I, my feelings are, um, you can go through these very rapidly if you really want to. Yeah, well, the, my experience is I'll drop into the fear, you know, I'll just howl it out and bash the pillow or something like that. Yeah, and but, pretty fast. but the reality is you don't have a huge amount of rage in you. Oh, and well, yeah, I guess not. But no. I mean, so I do that, and then, you know, I'll go into the other deeper emotions. Yeah. But um, there may, say, while I'm in fear, all of a sudden, a, another flash of rage may come up. Yeah. So now, do I go back to the rage? And, yeah, and, and if it's say, there. Okay, yeah. drop the fear and hit yeah. the rage again, yeah. and then drop back into the fear. Yeah, yeah. And, just feel so what's on. present at that moment. Yeah. That's all you need to. But I mean, can you have two emotions coming in at once? Well, often uh, there's a whole gamut of emotions in one particular experience. Yeah. So, you know, like, so if you have a father with a stick screaming and yelling at you, beating you, yeah. then there's a whole lot of different emotions. Right, all at once. Like, yeah. All at once. So there, yeah. there'll be anger, but there'll also be terror, you'll be terrified, yeah. Yeah. but you'll also have huge grief about why is my daddy beating me? Right, right, you know, right. the, like, those emotions will be present. The key is just to feel the event okay. and stay with the event while you're feeling all of those, and you might cycle between the different emotions. Okay, the key is to not judge all of that. The key is right. just to feel them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> my feelings are when you become self indulgent is when you're, you want other people to share in it with you. When you want other people to share, you're out of line. Yeah. So if I want you to share in my grief, I'm out of line. If I want you to share in my fear, I'm out of line. Yeah. If I want you to agree with my rage, I'm out of line. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask, have we finished talking about asking now? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yep. You want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Right. See. Anyone can go. Oh, I'm, I'm going. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone okay with that? Yeah,